This is just a quick video to show you how you can compile your script node networks to a DLL. So this is an effect that's been provided by Linden for this video. And when we compile script node effects, what we're doing is we're basically making a DLL that combines the script node networks you have in your project. And it will make them run probably a little more efficiently, use a bit less CPU. And it also means we can load them into hard-coded effects modules, which I'll show you in a little while, which are a bit easier to interact with from our UI script. So the first thing to do, once you've got your patch, click this button here, which will open the node properties and make sure this button here, allow compilation is set to enabled. So any of the networks in your project that you want to compile must have this set to enabled. So I've already been through and enabled it on most of these. So this one as well, set to enabled. And once you've set it to enabled, you just click off for that to go away and make sure you hit save to resave that. So I've done it for all of them except this one, Merge 2. So this one, I'm leaving it disabled. So we're not going to combine this one into the DLL. So on my desktop, I have the project folder and we've got the DSP networks folder in there. And then inside networks, we have the XMLs that represent these effects. And if I just open one of these up in a text editor, you can see it's got this tag here, allow compilation equals one. And now if I do the same with that merge two, which doesn't have it enabled, you can see there's no allow compilation flag. Okay, so now we're going to compile them. So we go to export, compile DSP networks as DLL, and then we have to select the configuration. Is it a debug or a release? So if you're exporting your plugin as a debug version, you also need to export your networks as a debug version. And if you're exporting your plugin as a release, then you set the network export to release as well. And then just before we compile, we can see which nodes it's going to compile here. And these are the three that I've enabled the allow compilation button on. So we'll click OK. And it's told me there's a batch file that's been created. And I'll click OK and it'll show me that. So that's this file here. If you're on Windows or Mac, it will probably just auto launch this batch file. But I have to do it manually. So I'll just drag that into a terminal and hit enter. And this will only take a moment to compile. So while that's compiling, I'll just close that window there that popped up. So sometimes you'll have networks that use modulators and things from highs, and those networks might not compile because they're expecting external data. And it will look red, like this multi thing here is showing as red. So this network would fail to compile and there'd be an error. So when you have networks that won't compile because you need this external data coming in or for some other reason, what you can do is split your network into two networks and have the network that needs the external data as an uncompiled network and then have the rest of the functionality of the network in a compiled node. And then you can bring that compiled node into your sort of master network, which combines the two parts. Or if it's not a very CPU intensive network, just leave the whole thing uncompiled because it's not critical. So that says it's finished. So if we go back to the networks folder, we now have this binaries folder and inside here we have the DLL folder and inside here that is the compiled DLL. So if you're on Windows, that will say DLL. If you're on Mac, I think it's a .lib file or something else. I'm on GNU Linux, so it's a .so file. So this compiles all of the networks in the project into a single DLL. So all of the networks in here that have that allow compilation button enabled, so these three, are compiled into that one DLL. So it's not one DLL per network, it's one DLL per project. In addition to creating the DLL, if we go back to the root of the project folder and we go to the additional source code folder, we now have this nodes folder here and this will have some header files for each of those um, nodes that we've created. And sometimes when you modify your nodes and then recompile, you might have to delete these header files or you'll get some sort of mismatch. So just be aware of that. Okay, so now we can close highs and reopen it. And instead of adding script effects this time, so before we had a script effect and then we'd select the network from this drop down, and these networks match to the, uh, to the XML files. So there's those networks here, that's what we're seeing in here. So we'll click the plus button and we will add hard coded master effects. I think this has been renamed. I think it just used to be called hard coded effects before. And now we don't get any sort of script node editor popping up. 
everything happens in here. So we can click this drop down and now we can see our three networks that are being compiled. And now we can use this just like a regular effect. So if we add a, a UI script or open our U, UI script and we can add a knob to the UI and now we can just select processor ID, hard coded master effects one and select any of those knobs we want to connect to. And now it works just like any other effect. Um, if I've set the range correctly and I haven't, so let's set that to frequency. There we go. So now it just connects up really easily through uh, parameter and processor ID. It's so much simpler. And just so we can see how this compares to the script node version or the uncompiled version. So which one was that? That was the LWR patch. So we'll load LWR in here. So whatever you put in the sort of macro section of your script node patch, whatever controls you put here, these are what are going to show up in this UI in the hard coded master effects. Now, if you want to insert multiple copies of the same effect, you just add another hard coded master effect. So we can have a dirt module in there and we'll also have the dirt module in there. And these are completely independent instances now. So we've got two instances of the same effect, all being read from that DLL. Okay, I hope you found this helpful. Uh, if there's anything you want me to go over in more detail, if I skipped over something, uh, just let me know and I can do a follow-up. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.